So I might have mentioned this a couple of times, but I'm teaching this playlist of videos as a real course to real students. And one of the most difficult concepts turned out to be the idea of a measurement basis. I don't think that's actually because measurements are very difficult to understand. I think it's just because I explained it really badly. But I'm going to try again this time with this secret weapon. It's called calcite. I hope with this it's going to be a lot easier to understand the idea of a quantum measurement because this is a quantum measurement and it's one that's relatively easy to understand. Here's what it does. The calcite splits the dot into two dots, but why are there two dots? Well, it's because the light coming from the dot up through the calcite gets split into two depending on its polarization. This filter will only allow through light that is pointing in that direction. And so the dot on this side must be the dot that has its polarization like that. On the other hand, if I rotate this polarization filter, now only the dot on the left is visible. And so this dot must have had polarization pointing in this direction. So what calcite does is that it splits light into two different polarizations, and those two polarizations are at right angles to each other. In this case, one is at the diagonal and the other is at the anti-diagonal. But another way of thinking of that though is that this measures how much of the light was pointing in the diagonal direction and how much of it was pointing in the anti-diagonal direction. So this is a quantum measurement. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so this is my setup for this experiment. It is not ideal. So I have one of those clicky things for presenting slides um, that has to be hooked up to the power because it keeps dying, but it is got a little polarizer here, um, which means that all of the light is polarized in the vertical direction. Then I have my calcite, which isn't super pure or anything. And so you can see it's leading to some defects, but you can pretty clearly see two different dots. So let's confirm that the two dots represent the diagonal and anti-diagonal polarizations. So first we'll do the diagonal one. And yeah, you can see pretty cleanly how the top one disappears. So the diagonal one, cuts out the top one, leaves the bottom one, and anti-diagonal cuts out the bottom one, leaves the top one. All right, that's fairly clean. You can kind of see it. Okay, so the experiment kind of worked, but let's draw it in theory because um, the battery of that won't die. So the state of the light we had was vertical, which I'm gonna draw like that, and we were trying to figure out how it splits into light that is diagonal or anti-diagonal. So that is the measurement that the calcite, when it's oriented like this, does. It measures whether it's diagonal or anti-diagonal. And then the strength of the two dots tells us how much the light splits up one way or the other. Since we had vertical light, we would expect it to split 50-50, because it's exactly halfway between these two options. And that's what we saw, more or less. But what about if we rotated this light state so it's no longer vertical, instead it's diagonal itself? What should happen to the light? Well, in theory, we expect that the state lines up with this option, and so all of the light should go to one of the dots and not the other. Let's see if that happens. Fingers crossed. Okay, so that's sort of 45 degrees and, oh my God, yeah. That looks more or less right. Yeah, all of that light seems to be polarized in the 45 degree direction, which is great. I'm glad something worked. So this calcite is indeed measuring these two options. But what about if I rotate the calcite by some angle theta? like this. What do you think happens to the two measurement options? Well, they should rotate as well, right? And by the same amount. For example, if I rotated this by 45 degrees, 
the new basis vectors have also rotated, so now they're vertical and horizontal. Let's see if the experiment confirms this. So in this case, the light is horizontal as well. I'm going to rotate this by 45 degrees. Whoa, that kind of worked. Okay, so see how there's two dots before? And then when I've rotated the basis, there's only one dot. That is nice. That goes to show that when you rotate this calcite around like this, what you're doing is you're changing these two vectors, and they're called the measurement basis for this calcite in a particular orientation, and they represent the two options for the light when it goes through calcite. It can either be polarized in this direction, or it could be polarized in this direction. And so those are the measurement outcomes, and for every measurement in quantum mechanics, there's always multiple outcomes that could happen. And each one of those always gets represented by a measurement basis, where each vector in that basis represents one of the options, and they're orthogonal to each other. In other words, there's a 90 degree angle between them. That 90 degree angle is supposed to represent the fact that these are completely opposite to each other, because you couldn't ever have seen both of those happening at the same time when you do a measurement. So that's the relationship between a measurement basis and a physical measurement. But in the last video, I measured the exact same basis with this filter. So I said that the light that goes through this filter is either aligned vertically or it's going to get cut out and therefore it must have been aligned horizontally. And so there are two options for this measurement as well. The two options are it goes through because it is in the vertical direction or it gets cut out because it was in the horizontal direction. And so the two outcomes actually represent the same two vectors. So this measurement actually has the exact same measurement basis as this measurement does. In a way, they're measuring the exact same thing. So while physically these two measurements look really different, the mathematics of them is exactly the same. That's all well and good, but you might be thinking, how is this a quantum measurement, right? Like, it just measures the polarization of light. Like, surely that's a classical thing. Well, actually, this is quantum, but you can only see the quantum effects of it when you have light that's extremely weak. So let's look at that case. In classical mechanics, the light looks like a wave when it comes out of this laser. And if we were to make this laser really weak, all that would happen is that the wave would be less wavy. But it would still be a wave. Then what happens when it goes through the calcite? Well, the calcite breaks it up. It actually breaks it up 50-50 in this case. To two even weaker waves. So this is the classical picture of what the calcite does to this wave. It just splits it into two waves. But what if this laser is so weak that only one photon worth of energy is coming out per second? So for a red light like this, one photon of energy is like 1.7 electron volts, which is extremely weak. So if that is how much energy is coming out per second, then what does the light look like? Well, it's tempting to think it's one photon coming out per second, so a little particle coming out, little particles one at a time around one per second. But that isn't right. Quantum mechanics says that the light is still a wave all the way up until here. When it touches the wall, then it gets absorbed, and light can only be absorbed in full photon chunks. So every second, about one chunk worth of energy is going through this system. And so at that second, what will happen? Will you get two sort of half chunks turn up here? Or will you get one full chunk in both of these positions? The answer according to quantum mechanics is that randomly you will have it end up being in just one of those places with a full photon's worth of energy. And every time you repeat this measurement, you will get a random answer. So maybe it'll turn up here this time. And then the next second, 
maybe it'll turn up here. So that's why in quantum mechanics, when we're talking about measurements, we always talk about probabilities. In classical mechanics, there is no probability in this situation, like 50% of the light splits up and it will go one way and 50% will go the other way, and that's completely deterministic. But in this case, it's a 50% chance that it will go one way or the other. And so that is what's quantum about it. So I hope this example of this calcite helped clear up the idea of a measurement basis. By the way, it seems like you're interested in learning quantum mechanics and going beyond just like vague analogies and actually getting into the mathematics. If you want to do that with a class of other people and have like weekly homework um, and tutorial sessions with me, then you're in luck because there's another cohort of the live version of this course that I'm going to run in January. So if you're interested in that, there's a link in the description to it. I just finished the first cohort and it was so much fun um, and I hope that I'll see you for the second one.